start the series and start learning French. It's Friday, New Somme Live, and it's time for the last leg. Tonight on the show, we sink our teeth into more flag drama, turn our eyes to the Paralympics, and keep our ears open for an election. Plus, we'll be joined by comedians Sarah Pascoe, Josh Pugh, and Manya Chihuahua on the show that always faces up to the news. Welcome to The Last Leg, the show that saw there was a drama about Prince Andrew on Netflix and thought that's the closest he'll ever get to the crown. <laughs> With me as always is the pride of Dartmoor, Josh Whittacombe, and the man who thought Storm Kathleen was the person Donald Trump paid to keep quiet, Alex Brooker! <laughs> now, if you didn't see the show last week, uh, you missed that we put these sculptures here up for auction. Uh, to raise money for Stand Up to Cancer. I mean, looking at them right now, it kind of looks like Mount Rushmore, but with less missing limbs. <laughs> People are tuning in going, bloody hell, they've moved on to prosthetic heads now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Luke tweeted us to say that uh, Josh looks like he's been separated at birth from Chucky from Rugrats. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. It, it looks like Chucky had a really bad time after the show finished. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Tell you what, that... I wondered, I wondered why they'd put these here. Is that...? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is a really tough game of Shag, Marry, Avoid. <laughs> well, we'll see... Well, one of them's definitely Avoid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm proud to say each sculpture has now been sold. They raised a total of £3,241 for Stand Up to Cancer. Uh, <laughs> But the big question is, who was the most popular? I can tell you, uh, Jordan, where's Jordan? Jordan Gray went for £350. Uh, Alex went for £530. Cop nosed on me. Josh, <laughs> Josh went for £550. Richard Osman went for £810. And my face went for £1,001. <laughs> Are you sure that that's not because someone thought yours was King Charles? <laughs> <laughs> it's because you get more money, you get a lot more money. That nose is also a coat hook. It's lovely. <laughs> well, look, so I had a look at the bidding when, we, when, yeah. when they first went up on eBay last week after the show. And my favourite thing is, someone bid on mine. They bid 450 quid on it at half past midnight after the show. And then four minutes later retracted it when I assumed they'd sobered up. <laughs> I like the idea that they were watching the show on catch-up and they watched it and they were like, actually, he's not as good as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I go, it's for charity. Who withdraws a bid for charity? <laughs> Imagine you watching Children Need. They go, let's have a look at the totaliser. Oh, it's gone down, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be honest about something. Yep. And Alex doesn't know this. Yeah. Um, do you know the reason why yours reached £1,001, Hilsey? I do, but Alex doesn't. I assumed it was because Hills was bidding on it himself. No. No. You know you turn 40 in a month? Yeah. I tried to buy that for you for your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see it went for £1,001? Yeah. I put maximum bid 1000 I got fucking outbid. <laughs> <laughs> So, happy birthday. I've got you some purple glasses. <laughs> well, can we just confirm, then, as you said this live on national television, that you're going to spend a grand on me for my birthday? No, I'll be honest, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, Brooker. I didn't think I'd come near to the top. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, oh, look at this. I'm ready to give my views on politics. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to know? <laughs> I don't know why, why are you sitting like that? I don't know. I just kind of get excited about I, it. All day. I think they can, I think they cancel news night if you sat like that. It's <laughs> <laughs> more like basic on... instinct than news night. Here's my news on politics, and this is my member. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the the other weird thing. You're right. So my my face had a last minute surge, if that makes sense. Um, and I, I think you've looked good for years, Hill. Thank you. <laughs> Late on was going to be the winner. Yeah. We were pretty sure he was going to be the winner, so we asked him to make an acceptance video. But then, as you say, at the last minute, there was a late... ...ended up winning, 
So we went back to Richard Osman and asked him to make a runners up video. Adam, I just wanted to say congratulations on raising so much money for Stand Up to Cancer. Um, listen, you beat me and uh, I'm very happy about it because it's for charity, mate. And the most important thing is we both beat Josh. <laughs> Um, what's, what's lovely is that three of the winners, uh, the winning bidders, are in the audience tonight. Uh, some of them have lost friends and family to cancer, which is why they bid. So we have uh, Neil and Lisa, uh, they won Josh's face. Brad and Emma uh, won Alex's face. Uh, and Quinn and Jules won Jordan's face. Uh, Lynn, who won mine, and Neil, who won Richard's, weren't able to be here. Um, Thank you, all of you, for bidding. Where's Brad? Brad, so I can... OK, so you're visually impaired, are you? Yeah, and I've retracted my uh, £450 bid at half past 12. As well. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, you do know you bid 530 quid on it, don't you? <laughs> I, I, I didn't know you were going to read out the amounts, cos I haven't actually told my wife. <laughs> I'm not sure how visually impaired you are. You do know it's Alex and not Hagrid. <laughs> <laughs> and look, we are live tonight. Thank you all of you for bidding. We really appreciate yeah, it. Thanks so much. Um, we are live, of course. You can send us any questions you'd like us to answer. Message us at the last leg. Use the hashtag is it OK? And we're going to start this week with a continuation of what's been gone over, going on over the past few weeks. As Alex Lee Thompson said, is it OK to be sick and tired of all these woke flags destroying my nation's beloved union flag to <laughs> suit their own agenda? Yes. Once again, the country's been subjected to more namby-pamby, pearl-clutching, hand-wringing nonsense this week. <laughs> and we're here to make sense of it. Because if you're up in arms over nothing much... Who are you going to call? <laughs> Do you know what I liked about that, Hilsey? <laughs> yeah. Now, what people at home won't know is the audience recorded that earlier. Yeah. <laughs> and yep. they didn't realise it was going to be played in then. And then when you said the words, who are you going to call? Just as a reaction, they just did it. <laughs> <laughs> At the wrong moment. <laughs> and I would say, congratulations, but you fucked it up. <laughs> Someone who went early behind me, I swear I didn't go, this doesn't normally happen. <laughs> 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 so, the news we're talking about is this. This week, there were newly designed Team GB flags released to support British athletes in Paris later on in the year. Now, this is what the detailed designs look like. There's the flag. Uh, there's someone wearing it over their shoulder. There is a water bottle. Some loved it. Some hated it. It basically boiled down to a fight between the flag meddlers and the flag shaggers. Uh, <laughs> the flags themselves have now sold out. But the president of the National Flag Institute said the des design was defacing the Union Jack. Now, I'm not saying the president of the National Flag Institute is wrong, but the initials of his organisation are literally NFI. <laughs> Former footballer Peter Shilton said, is nothing sacred anymore, and frog-faced anger monger Nigel Farage called it a union joke and said they want us to basically be ashamed of who we are as people. Is this design OK? Well, the way I look at it is, if they're not happy with the GB flag, they are not going to like the amount of small boats in the sailing. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to be yeah. They'll be like, I know where they're heading. Yeah, I think the finish line. Now nah, they're going to go all the way up through France, straight to the channel. <laughs> I was disgusted with the flag. Were you? Have you seen it? No, I don't know if, you, if we could see it. Mm -hmm. No, we, we can't. That's how disgusted <laughs> I am. I think the colours are wrong. I think, the, I think the lion is sticking his tongue out. <laughs> and I have it on good authority, he's blowing a raspberry at Winston Churchill. <laughs> it's disgusting. One person this week described the whole thing as, quote, a marketing gimmick, to which the entire world went, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, things are updated all the time. Computers, phones, maps. I mean, are these people also complaining about the Atlas being revised? <laughs> I mean, in my day, it was called Burma. Look, I often forget how old you are. <laughs> 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 no, I might be wrong here, but it seems to me Britain was at its most patriotic after the 2012 Olympics and Paralympics. I don't know. What? Remember when that geezer put the flare up his ass at the Euros? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, he I... literally put himself at full mast. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say it was that or VE Day. <laughs> 
Or, you know? or, or, do you remember when Colleen Rooney won the Wagatha Christie Trial? <laughs> <laughs> Look, regardless, 2012 was a time when the entire country united behind people like Jessica Ennis, Andy Murray, Johnny Peacock and Ellie Simmons, who were dressed like this. Now, yes, Stella McCartney changed the design of the flag, and yes, she copped some criticism at the time, but no one looks back on 2012 and thinks the nation lacked patriotism because of the colours of the kit. If I remember rightly, the only thing that was booed at those games was George Osborne. <laughs> the only clothes I had a problem with mm -hmm. at London 2012 Paralympics yeah. was uh, when Alex went on TV wearing a jumper that had a shirt collar sewn into it. Yeah. Yeah. That's stuff is what? We have any, what? Flags now we're on to shumpers. What's that from? <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, we are going to look ahead to the Paris Paralympics later in the show. So our poll for tonight is this What are your magic Paralympic moments? Uh, Message us at the last leg. Use the hashtag Paramoments. We'll go through them later. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. There was at one time I wore this jumper. <laughs> 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 and look, the irony is people mess with the design of the flag all the time, including some of the people who are now kicking off oh. about the design of the flag. Because when Alex Lee Thompson tweeted us uh, at the top of the show to say, is it OK to be sick and tired of all these woke flags destroying the nation's beloved union flag to suit their own agenda, he was doing it sarcastically, because he also attached this telling photo of the Dudley Brexit party. <laughs> What a bunch of left-leaning, tofu-eating, drag brunch-attending snowflakes they are! <laughs> Just so you know, Dudley Brexit Party, that's actually the bloke in the um, beige jacket. <laughs> it looks, that flag looks a bit like... You know when the printers run out of toner? <laughs> <laughs> well, I like, know one kicked off then. What about this one? Alex also attached this unpatriotic shot. The flag of Nigel Farage's party when he was in charge. Which means he's either a massive hypocrite who's happy to change the flag when it suits him, or he's a shameless grifter who'll say any old inflammatory shit just to get attention. Is it possible he's both? Do you know what? Do you know what? No one was going. No one was going to clap that, and one person fucking drove that through. <laughs> And I've got a feeling that was the person that started woke busters at the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you just think, no, I didn't realise how many people were so bang into flags mm. this week. Like, people really get passionate. <laughs> yeah. Like, some of them to the verge I think a few of them, they might even, like, get the awn off them. Oh, yeah. And I think, I keep thinking there's money to be made. Like, maybe, like, a, like a niche version of OnlyFans. Right. You know, like, kind of like Nigel Farage, draped in the Union Jack? Yep. Pay £15 for a month for that. Flag slags. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. Uh, Alex, at the top of the show, also attached this disrespectful picture. I... Oh, you... my God. GB News. The last bastion of national pride has also meddled with the Union Jack. How dare you take one corner of the Australian flag and repurpose it for your own device? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I haven't noticed that, because I have GB News on all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> and, look, you might be asking yourself why some of these people care so strongly about the flag at some times, and then not as much at others. Well, the answer lies in something interesting Lee Anderson said last year when he was the deputy chairman of the Tory party. He was asked about the Conservatives' success at the previous election in 2019, and he said this. There were three things that won us that election. It was Brexit, it was Boris, it was Corbyn, and it was as simple as that. He then said, at the next election we haven't got those three things, so we'll have to think of something else. And then said, it'll probably be a mix of culture wars and trans debates. I tell you what, the way J.K. Rowling's going at the moment, it wouldn't surprise me if her next book's called Harry Potter and the Culture Wars and the Trans Debate. <laughs> Did you know, uh, culture wars and trans debate, I don't approve of it, but apparently they are the name of the two new gladiators next series. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Anderson... <laughs> I think it's wokery gone mad, but that's just me. <laughs> Lee Anderson was like a Bond villain, just turning around in a chair going, explaining his plan to take over the world. <laughs> like, no, Mr Starmer, I expect you to define a woman. <laughs> So what's the solution to all the anger? Because there is a lot of shouting at the moment. I just... You know, like, the GB flags thing? Yeah. Like, think about that. Like, my big thing, my big kind of advice is don't get upset about a water bottle. Yep. You know, like, TLC once said, don't go chasing waterfalls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Don't get upset about a water bottle. It's a water bottle. Do you know what I mean? Like, go out, it's nearly beer garden weather, title races on, you've got the Euros. Go and watch an episode of Bluey. Just fucking nourish your soul. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 you know, every morning, if I'm feeling stressed, mm. I meditate, and then I manage to get through work with you too. <laughs> <laughs> And so I'd say, just, just chill out. Just enjoy it. Lana Del Rey's got a new album out in the summer. Blur are back on tour. Life is good. Yeah. <laughs> but clearly there's a portion of society who have a slightly unnatural connection to the national flag. And something Alex said earlier gave us an idea of how to reach that market. Ooh. Are you a flag shagger? <laughs> Do you want to get red, white and really blue? Then why not join only flags for the discreet middle-aged man we've got silk flags flags whipping in the wind <laughs> and for a premium payment for a premium payment we've got international flags that are upside down <laughs> and if you're at half mast we'll help you get it up the flag hole you can get your union jack on or your union jack off. <laughs> Join only flags where everything is well hung. Oh yeah, I didn't think of only flags. I went with flag slags, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> said you've got a better marketing brain. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Labor's got a flag problem of their own this week because some councillors say the flag on their leaflets is turning off some minority voters. And Keir Starmer is so desperate not to offend right now, he's running what's called a Rocky Horror campaign in that it's just a jump to the left and then a step to the right. <laughs> Here are the colourful leaflets. Ooh. Now, the colours on the back were chosen to match messaging relating to Labor's missions. They are, apparently, growth pink, green energy green, NHS blue, policing yellow and opportunity purple. Have they, they got, we can still fuck this up brown? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they sound like the worst Power Rangers ever. <laughs> I think police in yellow sounds like Farrow and Ball have run out of ideas. <laughs> My favourite one is green energy green. <laughs> it's like, come on, guys, roll the dice. Mix it up. <laughs> I like green energy red. Show people you're a maverick. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in Germany this week, Adidas came under fire for releasing this striking pink away shirt for the Euros. Now, considering weed was legalised in Germany this week as well, you'd think they'd all be a bit more chilled out about things. <laughs> I think it's going to be nice for the German fans to match the sunburnt England fans. If you're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to make matters worse, the home shirt for Germany featured a font that made the number 44 look suspiciously like the logo of the infamous Nazi police, the SS. Okay, girl. <laughs> it's, you, you might say, obviously, no one has 44 on the back of their shirt because there's mm. only 23 players at the Euros anyway, but I always have 44 on the back of my England shirt. Because I've got huge pride in our international dialing code. <laughs> <laughs> I just think if you're not going to go for it as an England fan, you're not going to fuck it. You've got to go yeah. for it. 44. <laughs> yeah. That's 44. And the outrage <laughs> continued at home this week when the National Trust was put on the woke list for selling vegan scones. <laughs> uh, so Bill Cash MP said, and this is a quote. It makes me wonder what will happen next. Will they stop selling Madeira cake because of historical events in Madeira? <laughs> you're, you're right, Bill Cash. What else are they going to come for? Is the pound cake going to become the euro cake? <laughs> Can we even call it a Black Forest Gatto anymore? <laughs> I mean, before you know it, you'll be eating a gender-neutral... <laughs> You know what? You know what? It actually is fun to get angry about things that don't exist. That was that was fun. I enjoyed that. I find it quite funny that they like they they're upset about the scones mm. because that's like that's the one thing I think it's very difficult to look angry while eating a scone. Like you can't say that again. Do you hear about that water bowl? <laughs> <laughs> what are you? What? Because that's how I hold a scone. No, because you said scone. It's scone. Oh, I thought you were just looking at my hands. So it can't have taken you this long to realise. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm a scone man. I say scone. What do you say? 
Um, Scone? Yeah. I think. I but to be fair, like... I also watch Game of Thrones, so it's... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the National Trust, by the way, said they use a vegetable-based spread like margarine for their scones or scones, and that actually they've been doing it for years and no one has noticed. Uh, so, you know, what's the big deal? Here's the perfectly rational response, though, that was given to the scones from GB News. But, I mean, this is outrageous, Ben. I'm sorry, it's going gay. I'm not happy with this. I mean, what, wh why, why should everyone be vegan? Just because a tiny majority in this country are. So, you know, it comes back again to what I was saying before. This is... The National Trust is famously woke. <laughs> oh, what? Just, just the been... mad bit... Why does everyone have to be vegan? They're not saying everybody ha If you're not vegan, you're still allowed to eat something. But it doesn't mean everything has to contain animal. <laughs> yeah. Like, she's going, why does everyone have to be vegan? You're having fucking cream on it. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I had a banana this morning. That doesn't make me vegan. No. I don't no. think, does it? Well, no. No. I'll tell you what, though, I love my beef wheat a bix And look, while we're talking politics, uh, last week uh, we offered Lee Anderson a ticket to Rwanda because Lee Anderson said if any of this nonsense, con nonsense continued, or the week before he said that, uh, he was going to take the first flight to Rwanda. So we actually literally bought him a ticket. Uh, but, and, but it was for this morning. And we thought, well, let's not let it run out. We've changed it. Here's the confirmation. Little change here. Um, we've changed it to October the 25th. Uh, so it's, what, six months away? Plenty of time. Um, it, it still goes via Brussels. It's the best we could do. Um, so, Lee, if in any time before then there is more of this nonsense, you can fly straight to Rwanda. The email confirmation, by the way, did go to Lee Anderson's parliamentary account. So, Lee, if you're watching, check your spam. It'd be a shame to lose two seats this year. <laughs> uh... <laughs> now, now, last week on the show, we uh, threw... We, we basically packed a bag for Lee Anderson to take to Rwanda with him. Uh, we chucked in a whole bag of 30 peas, so he's got, he can afford to eat. Jeremy Clarkson's autobiography, some sunscreen, uh, some English river water. Uh, this week, we're going to throw a few more things in here. We've got um, some vegan scones. <laughs> Feels appropriate. We've got a new uh, GB bag tag for him, <laughs> the new design. Uh, and we also thought, because he said that he, you know, he doesn't want to wear the England kit anymore because they take the knee, so we've got him a uh, pink Germany kit. <laughs> and on the back, we've put the name of one of our favourite German footballers, uh, Robin Koch. <laughs> All right, let's welcome tonight's guests who proved that great comedians are just like buses because three of them turned up at once. Please welcome Sarah Pascoe, Josh Pugh and Munya Chihuahua. <laughs> How... OK, let's start with the flags. How do we feel about the flags for Ore? Oh, mate, bloody foreigners coming here, taking our primary colours. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, this is how it starts, Adam. Yeah. It'll be the name next. It won't be the Union Jack, it'll be the Union Babatunde. You watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, it's so outrage, isn't it? It's just politicians competing to pretend they love Britain the most. Like, I can't wait till Nigel Farage finds out that his Margaret Thatcher sex masks are made in China. <laughs> <laughs> I like the flag. I like the kit as well, the GB kit. To be fair, if I had to squeeze it into a one-piece spandex, I'd want the flag to be as distracting as possible as well. <laughs> <laughs> also, after what you just said, Munya, I'm hoping the guy with, with vision impairment realises that was sarcasm. <laughs> 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 um, has, OK, has the National Trust gone woke? I don't think you can become woke if so many of your houses were built on colonial colonialism and slavery. Like, that's <laughs> astonishing that they're now famous. 93 of their houses... Really? Yeah, colonialism and slavery. Right. Hard and to that's be woke. too woke for GB. <laughs> <laughs> Josh? I can't believe I'm saying this. The National Trust, it's gone soft. Back really? Back in the day, you could turn up at Trentham Gardens, you load a lad some cans, <laughs> crop a good tear up on the grass and then return <laughs> No, you can't. It's all vegan scones now. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, a few weeks ago on the show and throughout the series, we thought it'd be fun to try and summarise new, a news story uh, with a TikTok. And yep. a few weeks after that, the America tried to ban TikTok, so it's possible that we had something to do with that. But, Munya, because you're, you know, big on the socials, we thought we'd ask you to come up with a video about all of this this week. Does it need an introduction or should we just go straight to it? 
I'd just say, look, for people who think Britain's become too woke, yeah. I think we may have found a solution. OK, here it is. I remember a time when the only letters I had to worry about were B, L, P. <gasps> we could be a bit misogynistic, because everyone knew deep down, actually, we respected birds. Where we had a healthy amount of racism. Nowadays, things are so diverse, experts predict in a couple of years, the royal family is going to look like this. I think we all know who Prince Andrew is. We hear you, buddy. And that's why we're putting the can back into cancelled with Woca-Cola, the UK's first anti-woke fizzy drink. Every can comes with a built-in echo chamber to make your deluded beliefs seem normal. Women don't belong on a football pitch. Too right. I agree. Wow, you're so big and misogynistic. Remember, the hole's just for shouting in. Secondly, if you pour our drink under direct sunlight, there's a 100% no rainbow guarantee. I like my cola like a lot like Straight. And finally, all our adverts only feature white families. People say, ugh, you just don't want to see black faces on TV. Not true. I loved Little Britain. Woke Cola. Find us in all supermarkets on the far right. We'll have more last week for you after the break as we get ready for a Paralympic paradise. Plus, we want to know your favourite Paralympic moments. Message us at the last leg. Use the hashtag Paramoments. We'll see you in a little bit. We're joined by Sarah Pascoe, Josh Pugh and Manya Chihuahua. Now, look, this whole series has been underscored by constant reports of horror coming out of Gaza, culminating this week in seven aid workers being killed in what Israel have called a tragedy that shouldn't have happened. Yesterday, US President Joe Biden finally called for an immediate ceasefire, in much the same way that your elderly grandfather wakes up on the sofa two hours after lunch and suddenly goes, ''Yes, I'll have a tea.'' <laughs> Look, it'd be nice if this was some kind of tipping point in how the rest of the world is reacting to the conflict. So I think I speak for all of us when I say we hope that by the time we're back for our next series, the Israeli hostages will have been returned and the people of Gaza can live in peace. Would anyone else like to add anything? Yeah, I'd just say that, you know, I think it's important to remember that the situation isn't only now tragic that innocent British lives have been lost mm. because innocent, innocent Palestinian lives are being lost every day. Yeah. Yep. And the yep. value of life doesn't decrease or increase based on where a person's from. You know, we're very lucky in Britain that we can exercise a democratic right. We can write to our MPs, we can attend marches, we can petition for a ceasefire. So basically, anyone who's ever tweeted, all lives matter, now's your time to shine. Absolutely. <laughs> Now, of course, the next time you do see us, we'll be in Paris for the Paralympic Games, and we're al already in training. I don't know about you. Up to five croissants a day. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm having an affair. Uh, <laughs> here's a reminder of what we're in for. The London 2012 Paralympic Games. We're in Rio. It's time for Tokyo 2020. Jacks are waving. That gave me goosebumps on my fake leg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, Josh Pugh, we can announce that you are going to be there helping us cover the games this year. You looking forward to it? You ready? I'm, I am indeed, yeah. It's yeah. an absolute honour, really. I, I can't believe it. It'll be, um, be hard, I think. It'll be hard work. A lot of those athletes you saw there, they're kind of doing one event, then just going back to the village, whereas we'll be, we'll be covering all the events, won't we? So yeah. it's, it's almost harder, in a way, what we'll be doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, up for, I'm just, just happy to be on the plane. Or Eurostar, whatever works for you guys. 
<laughs> not very. Very feels like an insult, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really looking forward to it. Sarah, uh, yeah. you ready for the Paralympics? Yeah, I'm going to ask to be in it this time. Um, because <laughs> just let me explain myself. Because I've had two babies in two years, and it's yeah. not technically a disability, but I don't really have a pelvic floor anymore. <laughs> and um, so I thought I might ask the organisers after the very serious, very brilliant athletes have finished with the equipment, just leave it out, and then me and some other postpartum <laughs> women will just have a go. Um, <laughs> I'd like to run 800 metres without wetting myself. <laughs> you like one of my things I love most about it yeah. is like the fact that we go out there yeah. and like the same for people, we're all of a sudden we're in the majority. Yeah. Like there's more of us than like the muggles. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's fucking it's amazing it like we stare at the able-bodied people. <laughs> you know, like someone walks past and you're like, oh have you seen how many fingers he's got? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God, he's got two feet. Oh, my God. It's just, I love it. I can't wait. Uh, <laughs> now, the Olympic and Paralympic week kicked off this week in Paris. Unfortunately for one diver, his unforgettable performance in front of the President of France and millions of people around the country didn't go according to plan. I mean, on the upside, he's now eligible for the Paralympics. <laughs> <laughs> what people are overlooking with that clip, because there was three yeah. of them, he was the one that got it right. <laughs> <laughs> he's going, what are you other two fuckers up to? <laughs> it was on to your ass and then in. What are you doing? I really don't like the idea that somebody still held up a scorecard for banter for him. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's also a Paralympics GB event in Bath this weekend. It's open to anyone aged 10 and over with a physical impairment who wants to compete at a Paralympic Games someday. All you have to do is rock up to the Team Bath Sports Training Village between 9 and 10 a.m. tomorrow to register. There are 17 different sports to participate in. Swimming, fencing, triathlon, archery, athletics. Alex, you've been to one of these days. Yeah, back in 2010. Yeah. Back in the day, long before telly. Yeah, I went as a, got, as a journalist, went to go and try out a load of the sports. Was, we've we've uh, got yeah. a photo of you trying out shooting. Look at little oh, Alex. Look at the boy band hair. Absolutely <laughs> rocking it. But that's like that genuinely, that's like for me, that's like a proper like sliding accessible doors moment. <laughs> because it was genuinely like that was that was from there I got scouted to go onto the, the GB kind of development team for rifle shooting. And then a few months later, when I realised I wasn't good enough, Channel 4 put out an advert <laughs> and they were looking for people for the Paralympics in 2012 to be reporters. Yeah. I was a journalist at the time and you needed Paralympic experience of sports. And I kind of that's what what got me in. And like that moment, that photo there is what's kind of completely like changed, changed everything for me. And also the, the, the weird thing is also the targets that we were actually aiming at were pictures of Australians. So it's really <laughs> 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 now the people of Paris are also getting excited for the games. Last week they, they brought back something they haven't had for a while, something Ooh. called a waiter's race. And they did it for the games. Entrants had to carry a tray with a croissant, a coffee and a glass of water two kilometres through the city. The confusing footage looked like this. <laughs> now, as is the way on this show, we thought we needed a Paralympic version of that, so we're going to do it tonight. But we're going to need a Paralympic legend to start the race, so would you please welcome eight-time gold medalist Jody Cundy. <laughs> Before we do this, how, how are your preparations going for this year? They're going pretty good. Uh, we had World Championships in Rio last week, yep. and I won a gold and silver, so it's, it's going all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Going all right! Going all right! Going all right! You won a gold! Yeah, just, just to say that. <laughs> oh, nice! And you're going to be at the, the Paralympic Come and Try Day tomorrow, is that right? Yes, yeah, yeah, so you can come and see me. Got a few more medals with me. Uh, we'll <laughs> just share some uh, experiences and just get you involved in all the different sports. So, yeah, it's a great day. Come down to Bath and uh, come and have a good fun at just trying all the different sports. Brilliant. All right, well, now we are going to do our little last leg waiters race. So, uh, let's play the sting. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm <done>. <laughs> 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 Okay. 
So here's how it's going to work. Uh, we're, uh, three of us are going to carry plates with various breakfasts chosen by our guests. Uh, we will be blindfolded and led around a little course through the studio. Now, I'm going to put mine on. I think this is this what you've chosen, Sarah? It's, yes. Uh, what is it? It's a leftover vegetable curry. <laughs> All right, Alex, you're carrying what looks like um, smoked salmon scrambled eggs. Josh, you've got Cheerios. I, by the way, in this, mm -hmm. I don't think the blindfold is what's going to affect my ability to hold it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's kind of neither here right. nor there, really. I'm, I'm holding it. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Can I go right hand? Yeah, yeah. you got a strap or something? Oh, that, oh that sorry. Strap. Basically, yeah. just pull me along like a dog, dog man. Yeah. Okay. Yo, yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm okay. very nervous. That. As long as that stays tight and you're in front. <laughs> oh, in front. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't worry about that, that's okay, all right. Josh. God, this okay. is like my PIP assessment. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Are you boys ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Jody, take us away. Where are the two? Two. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, give us some shit. your favourite Paralympic moments. Message us at the last leg, use the hashtag Paramoments, we'll see you in a little bit. We're joined by Sarah Pascoe, Josh Pugh and Munya Chihuahua. Uh, Paul said, is it OK that Sunak doesn't think the British people want an election right now? Has he met the British people? <laughs> uh, so we have made our predictions. Josh said uh, the election will be July 15th after the final of the Euros. Alex said Monday 20th of May, the day after the final uh, day of the Premier League. I said October 10th or 17th. What we've asked, though, is all of our guests tonight and Josh and Alex and I have filled in our predictions. <laughs> Winner, majority, biggest upset, wild card. When do, you th when do you guys think the election might be? Well, as we know that Richard Percent is 100% AI, it will be whenever the next iOS update is. <laughs> <laughs> I think it should be a surprise. Like, they shouldn't know it's happening. Like, bleep test at school. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just no, like, no speech writers, no Ooh, prep. Nice. No, like, body language. This is how wide your legs should be. Yeah. They might be more honest. Yeah, just test them on the, what they've done so far, Josh. Yeah. I think uh, flying out day 2025, just a feeling. Just a feeling <laughs> I've got. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to put ballot box. We will look at them on our first episode back if there's been an election before then. Um, and look, just in case there is an election while we're off air, I read an analogy recently that I think is worth bearing in mind if there's an election. So most people think voting for a party and election is like hailing a taxi and they're looking for one that'll take them exactly where they want to go. But the truth is, voting for an election, at an election, it's more like catching a bus. It's never going to take you right to your front door, so your best course of action is to catch the one that you think is going in the right direction. So if you do have to cast a vote before we see you next, whether it's in your local elections or in a general election, look at the directions the buses are going and figure out which one will take you closest to where you want to go. Now, while some Tory MPs are supporting... Can I just the... say that's helpful and... <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. nailed me down for reform. I'm going to vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. Also, I've just realised that it was election predictions. Yeah. Oh, I did the title race. <laughs> <laughs> 
Harper. Sorry. Okay, I did see one of them that said winner Arsenal, so I figured it was you. <laughs> and look, while some Tory MPs are supporting the Prime Minister this week, others are taking aim. One insider said his regular fasting is making him hangry. It was a senior figure in Whitehall said it is not sufficiently understood how angry the Prime Minister is. He's tetchy and pissy to people. <laughs> because he fasts. He fasts every week, apparently. But so what, what are they suggesting that? So, like, if he had, like, an egg McMuffin on a Monday morning... Yeah. ..he's going to stroll into Downing Street afterwards and just go, ''Tell you what, that, those Rwanda flights... ..that's a bit fucking silly, isn't it?'' <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, is it possible the Prime Minister's hungry? And what should we do about it? It's just... It's a, it's a stressful job, anyway. Whatever you think to him, it's a stressful job. Yeah. You know, I, I punched a radiator last week so I couldn't open a PDF. <laughs> that's, that's all I had on that day. That's it. And you don't want to be disrespectful to fasting and start sort of like throwing carbs over the gates at Downing Street. I think we have to distract all the other politicians. Yeah. To make it equal. So like ring them from an unknown number, <laughs> or um, one of those little laser pens when they're trying to call. <laughs> that, that makes it much fairer, doesn't it? And look, there was an intrigue last night. The Tor Tory HQ released this garish post on social media, but this morning the post had been deleted. Now it reads at the top: Britain is the second most powerful country in the world. That's right, if the world is Destiny's Child, we're Kelly Rowland. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> really that's, enjoyed that's, that. That's still good, though, can I just say? Still good. Yeah. Yeah. Really still good. good. Still good. Yeah. But, but I mean, that poster, though... It looks like a really terrible announcement for the new James Bond, doesn't it? <laughs> 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 and there's no, there's no women on the poster. Well, there's barely any women here, Adam. <laughs> 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 That's a good point. Um, <laughs> just, to, just to give you an idea of Rishi Sunak's face there, mm. uh, that's him on a Monday. <laughs> um, just so yeah. you know, right, this is not the first country to do it. A lot of the countries have done it. Yeah. Um, and we, we found one, didn't we, Brooker? Yeah. This is the Australian research. version. <laughs> the Australian version, seriously? Yeah, there is. Yeah, OK, They've go on. It, it says Australia is the 108th <laughs> most powerful country in the world. There you, go. Uh, there, there you are, Central. There's Paul Hogan, there's Peter Andre, there's a cast of neighbours. <laughs> there's some boomerangs, there's a barbecue. I say it, it's better than our version. <laughs> <laughs> I... Yeah, do you know what? At, at least we've got some women on ours. <laughs> yes, Susan Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll have more last week for you after the break. Josh is going to wrap up the last seven days. We are going to finish the series by paying tribute to a great British institution. We'll see you in a little bit. Hello, Sarah Pascoe, Josh Pugh and Manya Chihuahua. We are dressed like this for the closing number about a great British institution. I'm not sure if you can tell what it is yet. Uh, <laughs> Josh, before we wrap up the show and the series, though, you've got a little surprise for Alex. 40th birthday? Yeah. So I have got you a present, Alex, because I didn't win the Hillsy one. You've got to be very careful with this. You genuinely don't know what this is, do you? No. Uh, so... It's not going to be a head, is it? It is a, <laughs> it is a head, but you open it. So I got them to make. It is a plasticine cast of Mike the Cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> so, anyway, this is going to go on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Josh has been oh, running the last seven days on oh. the flagpole. What have you got? Well, why are we dressed like this, Hilsey? Why? I tell you, because would you like to see a de delightful kebab shop in Wales that recently took TikTok by storm? Yes, please. Got some chips and the fryer and kebabs on the grill But the pizza should be frying Fresh if they You better hurry up Cause I need some grub And then gag him for kebabs You better be quick Chuck some chips and food Do you want some chips or some top? Squeeze 
Hadi lan Bu vakta çili sol sol Bu vakta çili sol sol <laughs> if you don't know what our closing number is going to be after watching that, then you don't know the last leg. <laughs> uh, we've just got time to tell you. We asked for your favourite Paralympic moments. Um, let's see. Uh, Angie Vostok said, New Zealander Liam Malone interview. Um, uh, Polly said, being in the Olympic Stadium, watching Hannah Cockroft race, win a gold medal and cry while singing the national anthem. And Sandy said, when leaving the stadium, hearing the little boy in front of me ask his mum, can I have a bionic leg like Johnny Peacock when I grow up? <laughs> yes, all of that is to look forward to when we see you in Paris. We are about to end the show and the series with a celebration of British culture. But before we do, would you please thank our guests, Sarah Pascoe, <laughs> Josh Q, Manya Chihuahua, and Jody Kundi, and my co-host Josh Winnikin and Alex Brooker. We'll be back later in the year for the Paralympic Games from Paris. Next week, Late Night Lyset will be on Channel 4 at 10 p.m. But with the flag being defaced and our sky and we thought we'd end the show and the series with an homage to one British dish that has stood the test of time. And we're going to do it with the help of a singer we featured on the show last year, Alice Ella, along with the actual stars of the viral kebab video that captured our hearts, <laughs> Jimmy and Fat. <laughs>